Committee, the gentlewoman from Michigan, Ms. Lockton. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today in support of the Solid Start Act, a truly bipartisan bill that I originally introduced on Veterans Day in 2020. This bill requires the VA to connect with veterans during their first year when they transition out of service to ensure they are aware of the benefits and resources that they have earned. I was thrilled to see this bipartisan legislation pass the Senate twice, both times by unanimous consent. And it passed the, the House as part of the Strong Veterans Act with overwhelming support by voice, voice vote. First, I'd like to thank my Veterans Advisory Board back in Michigan um, and the other stakeholders in my district who helped to craft this bill. I'd like to thank the American Legion, the Disabled American, American Veterans, and the VFW for their support, and the countless veterans and veteran families in the district who gave me their feedback to help us craft this bill. It comes directly from their experience, um, where overwhelmingly the sentiment was in that first year of separation, veterans do not understand all of the resources from education to healthcare that they are eligible for. 40% of the veterans in Michigan are unconnected totally from the VA and the resources they are entitled to. This statistic coupled with the experience of navigating those challenges in the VA um, are unacceptable. Um, every veteran I know has their own story as they transition out of the military, whether it's been three years or three decades. I watched this up close with my husband after 30 years of active duty in the Army. Newly separated veterans encounter changes in job status, lifestyle, housing, health care, education. It's a period of enormous change and also a period of vulnerability. Tragically, rates of veteran suicide are higher in those tumultuous first years than later after separation. Veterans are entitled to a variety of resources, but they only can access them if they know about them. That's why I introduced the Solid Start Act with my Republican friend, Congressman Joyce. This bipartisan bill codifies a pilot program, as Mr. Boss said, that was initiated under President Trump, and it shows great promise. But as we stand here tonight, this bill has now been unexpectedly thrown into jeopardy, and it's entirely because of political gamesmanship. Right now, at the last minute, before we vote on this bill, the Pro-Life Caucus has, enter, has, from the other side of the aisle, has asked to stop the bill from moving to prevent the 16 words that are on this page. This, these, these, this language has been in the bill since its inception when we created this. Quote, providing women veterans with information that is tailored to their specific health care. To be clear, if we pass this bill, it goes to the president's desk to be, saw, to be signed into law. Um, but just so we understand what was meant with the idea of providing women and veterans with information tailored to them. Pregnancy and mental health care, maternity care, mammogram, breast health, breastfeeding and lactation, menopause, gynecological cancer, pre-pregnancy health, chronic pelvic pain, birth control, osteoporosis, prosthetics for women, intimate partner violence, disordered eating, sexual assault. I can go on. There is a very long list of specific health issues that are specific to women. Instead, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are holding this bill hostage. The 16 words that they apparently now object to are essential for women's health care that is already covered by the VA. None of this is controversial. None of this is objectionable. It doesn't change one thing about veterans' benefits or services. It makes no changes to what they are entitled to. All it does is require the VA to, out, to reach out to service members three times in their first year from separation. It increases outreach to veterans. So let's talk about what this is really about. Earlier today, a letter went out from ranking member Bost and the pro-life caucus saying that members, while they supported it previously, should now turn against it. Um, after publicly uh, supporting this, they are now leaving it. Um, and why? Because they are concerned about VA policy. They are concerned about the VA's decision to provide veteran women with access to abortion when they have been raped, when they are the victims of family incest, or when a doctor confirms that the pregnancy is a risk to the health or the life of the mother. Not abortion on demand, not extreme policies, these very basic commonly accepted instances when a woman, woman veteran has gone through hell and has no other option. 
The other side of the aisle, to be clear, is objecting to this bill because they object to any exceptions whatsoever on abortion. It is a political game. It is literally putting politics ahead of the 18 million veterans and 200,000 each year that separate. It is our responsibility to honor the veterans, male and female. And I find it disturbing that you would play politics in this way. I ask the other side of the aisle to reconsider and support this bill.